Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Um, as promised in my last video, I made something with the burnt orange uh, corduroy, and um, please join me um, while I make this that I'm wearing right, right now. Autumn is my favorite time of year, so as soon as it was officially fall, I was ready. There were a lot of projects that I was saving to do um, this season, and I was finally getting around to the things that I wanted to make out of corduroy. Like I said in a previous video, I've been wanting to use this corduroy that I've had in my stash for many years. I had decided on this pattern. It was simple and would give me immediate satisfaction. The best part, this vintage pattern had all of its pattern pieces. And the last person that made this pattern was considerate enough to leave all the sizes intact, except for one little part that I could make up for easily by adding an inch to the hem. When working with vintage patterns, there's always the danger that not all the pieces are there. Um, but fortunately, the last few patterns I've used, um, the, nothing important was missing. As I didn't want to mess with the fragile pattern piece again, I just used the piece that I just cut out to do um, an opposite side piece that I needed to. My husband was in and out once he got home from work and let in a little friend. But this moth had to move and touching it kind of creeped me out, so I blew on it. I think what I love most about fall is the clouds and when it rains. I don't know what it is exactly and I can't explain it. I guess you could call me a pluviophile, but blue skies make me anxious. The clouds, however, are like my security blanket. It might be a conditioned response, being light and temperature sensitive since I was a teen, combined with fall and what clear sunny weather generally means up here, as this is fire season. It hasn't been uh, too bad up here this year. But last year at this time, I was evacuated, and it can be unsettling how quickly things can change on the mountain. But maybe these are the reasons why I find clouds so comforting. It is like the earth wrapped up in a blanket, diffusing the sun's oppressive light and heat and offering rain, dampening, even negating the most persistent forest flames. Hey, do you wanna see some autumn content? Some crispy leaves falling? Then enjoy this next clip. You can't say I don't deliver. Those are some crispy leaves. So what if the tree fell with those leaves? At least I can park there again. That leaning tree always made me nervous. But with these last snowstorms, um, it died. And the landlord happened to take care of it while I was uh, making this dress. I love patch pockets. I think I mentioned it in a previous video. They're some of my favorite pockets to make. They're so versatile and you can make them in virtually any shape. After I clipped the corners, I turned this, uh, this pocket around and this really is a lot of what sewing is, is um, preparing things to be sewn. One of the things you don't see in a lot of commercial patterns now is um, little details. This pattern happened to mention um, a specific uh, pressing technique um, and, and how to finish the corners. Um, it was something I already knew how to do, but it was just cool seeing it in a vintage pattern. So I just kind of meet the corners and fold it in just like so. And pin it and sew it as is on. 
there weren't very many tiny details in this dress I made. It was very basic. Um, so I thought I'd include a few little extra shots of the actual details that were in it, that were included in the dress. And after preparing two pockets, I applied them. And uh, something else that's um, particular um, and specific to patch pockets is just how much you have to pivot while you're sewing. My stiletto was also quite useful in the making of this dress because of the heavy-duty fabric, the, the corduroy. It was, it was uh, tougher to work with. Tough, meaning that uh, it was some pretty sturdy fabric, which would have bent my uh, smaller pins. Um, so I used my bigger ones on him. This is also why um, my needle, my sewing machine needle, got bent earlier. When I was going on and on about the oppressive heat of the sun, my needle bent. And I had to change it out for a new sewing machine needle. Something else that happens in fall, which any little dog owner will tell you, is that my little dog goes to ground, or goes to blanket, as I like to say. And he just did not understand why I had to get up. But I had errands to run. I also like wearing cozy socks this time of year. They're so fun to wear. I also had to pick up a Sam's Club order and uh, my coffee was in stock. But down in town, it's 10 to 15 degrees warmer than up where I live. Now let's finish all the edges of this dress. Talk about exciting content. So I uh, told myself last night that if I did not write down on a post-it note, because I forget. Anyway, um, if I didn't write it down that I would forget to reinforce this uh, belt belt hole thing uh, on the dress. Um, uh, and and I got started on the dress and, and finishing the edges and and I forgot to do that. So, um, but not before the dress was complete. So that's score right there but that's usually when I remember to do things like that on projects it's usually after the videos edited and and on YouTube I go oh oh I didn't do this so yeah so anyway um I remembered this time so So this pattern calls for a turned up hem. Um, and uh, it's a fairly simple hem. Um, I've got a tutorial on how to do it. Um, I know I did a tutorial way back when I uh, did my retro apron, which required it a lot. And this does quite a bit too, because technically, technically this is an apron. Where is that pattern? Anyway, um, yes, it's right here. Technically, it's an apron. I mean, it's a wearable apron. You can make a dress out of the apron, but yeah, it's an apron. So, so yeah, there's that. But anyway, um, go ahead and check that video out um, after you're done watching this video. Voice over June here, and I just wanted to say thank you to all my viewers and subscribers um, for helping to keep me encouraged and to make these videos. I really could not have done it without all of my viewers. And if you aren't subscribed um, and like this kind of content, then feel free to subscribe. I like to make nice and comfortable sewing content and, and I make other things too. So if you like comfy, low stress programs, then maybe my channel's for you. In my last video, where I'm turning things like this, um, I asked if there was an easier way to do this. Um, I really hope someone tells me that there is an easier way and outlines how to do it in the comments below. Um, because, um... Yeah, still at it there. I really didn't start to make progress until I got it to this point, and turning it makes it a mangled mess. But with a little pressing, 
I smote the ruin of my enemy on the mountainside. After trying it on, I decided that uh, the fit was a little frumpy, so I took my favorite element from my last project and used it on this one. The other project is right there, but I'll also put a link down in the description. So here's how it turned out. I styled it with a fun beret and my boots. And though you can't see it in this shot, um, there are little foxes printed all over my shirt. I think it turned out looking more like 1960s Mod Squad than a 1970s apron dress. And of course, those patch pockets that accommodate my cell phone nicely. Here I am trying to think of how a fox would act. Um, this is what happens when a cosplayer tries to make normal clothes. They, they, I, just, uh, I just cannot not do this. Thanks for watching till the end and um, thanks so much for joining me in my fall sewing misadventures and stay tuned for more fall content because I have a lot more fall type fabrics in my stash. That's that's my weakness. Uh, it's, it's this time of year and the fall leafy colors. Yeah, it's my season. Yeah. Anyway, um, oh, and before I forget, a big thank you to my husband Brent who chihuahua wrangles for me and also built me this wonderful path out here that I can film reveals on when I'm not up to going very far to do them. Anyway, um, so that's all I have for you. And this is Mountain June saying bye now. The oak trees that I have in my yard haven't quite turned yet. They're starting to, but not quite. So. Pretty soon there will be an explosion, even here on the divide where there's lots of evergreen trees. Um, there will be lots of deciduous ones still at this elevation and it'll be beautiful. I can't beat. So I plan, my plans for this path are to put ivies growing along these these sides, these logs, might build them up a little bit more. And uh, I started bringing all my little outdoor decorations out here. Um, as you can see, I've got, well, that kind of looks like uh, they're, like they're holding a group book meeting or something, you know, like a book club. Yeah, it's a book club. Forest Animals Book Club Limited, yeah. You heard it here first. Anyway, um, and as you can see, there are some things over in that area that I may not want to film, but they will be covered in snow if I film out here and it snows this year, which it usually does these days. But anyway, you can see there's a little bit of deep woods here, and I'm just loving it. So, there you go. That's, a, that's your bet. That's your better side. I know you like being held on this side better, but this this is this is your better side. Trust me. Trust me. You've got some nose nose issues. You got some nose issues. Why are you shivering? It's not cold. It's not cold. Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs>